In this question, we're going to use some paper to make a cylindrical popcorn container. And we have to determine which of these calculations would give us uh, the least amount of paper required to make the container. Well, when we're talking about the amount of material required, then we're talking about the surface area that we're going to need to make this container. So let's take a look at our container and we can see that we're going to need a bottom part here which would be a circle. So let me just draw that circle here and we're going to move it over to the side for our equation just to get a visual picture of what we're dealing with. Okay, so let's move that over here and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so we've got that bottom piece. And to that we're going to add the lateral surface area which is all this part here. And that would be the tube part of our cylinder. So let me just draw that in here and then move it over so we can get, a, again, a visual representation of that. Okay, so we'll move that over there and we'll shrink it down. And you'll notice, too, that we don't need the top part here because it's an open-topped cylinder. So we just need the bottom part and the side part. Okay, let's figure out the surface area of, of each of these shapes. We know for a circle, the area is given by the formula pi r squared. But what about the side part of our cylinder here? How do we figure that area out? Well, let's imagine that we cut, take some scissors, and we cut this uh, part of the cylinder right along that line there, say. And if we started to unfold the shape, we'd get something that looks like this. And if we kept going, we'd eventually end up with a rectangle. Where this side here would be the height of the cylinder. And this side here would be the circumference of the cylinder. This part right there. And the formula for circumference is 2 pi r. So the formula for the side area here, this, this part here, would be the length times the width, so h times 2 pi r. So let's now stick that into our equation here. So we would get h times 2 pi r, or we could go 2 pi r h, doesn't matter, we can go the other way. Okay, I'll get rid of this part here so we can use the space to work in. So now that we have our formula for our surface area, let's go and see what variables we have. We have r for the radius and h for the height. So when we look at our diagram, we can see the height here is 22 centimeters, so we can stick that in there. Height is 22, and the radius would be half the diameter, and we're given the diameter, so let's stick the center of the circle there and draw a line out to be the radius, and that would be given by half of the diameter, which would then be 9 centimeters. Okay, so let's plug the values for h and the values for r into our equation and see what we get. And one thing to note before we continue is that the tube part and the circle part share the same radius, which is this 9 centimeters. So these are the same variable here. Okay, so we would get pi times the radius, which is 9 squared, plus 2 pi times the radius of 9 times the height of 22. Now we could go ahead and solve this further, but if we look at our options, we can see that they haven't gone all the way to simplified form, and looks like C matches our equation, so C is the right answer. 